the stuff. So, okay. Greetings, welcome to Terra Prime Live. Darth Monon is coming to you with Darth Alice. Hey, y'all. So, um, the reason we're coming to you today is because probably most of you have seen Star Wars Visions on Disney Plus, and therefore, if you hadn't been hip to it before, you are now hip to the Katana Saber. Um, we now have essentially canon, sort of canon depictions of of uh, of uh, these Katana Sabers, um, sabers that have hilts that are reminiscent of Japanese. Uh, swords uh, like this one right here. Um, so we're usually talking about like a disc guard, and of course, sometimes with uh, this. Uh, what was the what was this wrapping called? Sukaido. Sukaido. Yes, with the Sukaido uh, pattern there. So um, there. Um, anyway, um, in case if you didn't know, they do exist. Um, Darth Alice has been doing them for years. Um, you're the person who is responsible pretty much for getting the whole thing out there. Um, if you look, if you go on to Google and you Google Katana Saber, lightsaber, his work will show up. Um, we'll, I'll try to find some stuff that we can show you, um, during the program as well. So, um, welcome Darth thank you yes. thank you well you know that's the funny thing and you were with me when it happened originally yeah. i believe the first lightsaber that was built to resemble or act like a katana was from uh doclo or don close and it was an aluminum pipe essentially they had the sides milled down there were grooves that were all cut into it and it had like a like a milled out piece of uh brass for for the pommel and for the uh suba for the handguard well john originally owned that one he, he still does. Yeah, yeah, he still has it. And he brought it to me asking if there'd be a way I could add electronics to it and make it work, which I ended up doing a lot of machine work to it, modifying it. But it gave me the idea that I could carry on and potentially there would be people interested in that type of build. So it's probably been a good 10 years since all that happened, I would think. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, and um, I ended up getting my hands on like a three foot section of oval pipe and I started building katana sabers and then there was an interest and next thing you know, I don't know, I have over 200 of them under my belt at this point in time. Yes. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, we have uh, a post out there, your, your post, which has a, a lot of um, those things, uh, your past work. Mm -hmm. up there we'll go through some of your current work right now um in a bit but uh anyway um a lot of people i know in like the saber legion have been using subas as a hand guard and um so other companies have kind of followed the trend um of getting katana like sabers um this is the 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 uh Vader's vault. I can't remember the Legionnaire, I think it was called. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and this is also, it, you can see it's 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 contoured. It feels kind of more like a shinai than I would say a katana because it's got a round handle, it's 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 wasted kind of at the same places that that a katana or uh, that a shinai for kendo would be, but it does have the handguard. Um, and that's generally speaking what people are kind of identifying when they identify a katana saber is the uh handguard or suba that'd be fair to say yeah yeah usually any kind of guard and just that type of shape it doesn't matter if it's round pipe or if it's uh you know oval pipe it doesn't matter a lot of people look at it and it's a katana right you know and that's how a lot of guys go about doing it in fact saber forge i think was the first one after i came up i came up i don't know v2 or v3 mm -hmm. where i milled down the sides flat to again create that shape and then saber forge started doing that and after a while as you can see with vader's vault they tackled that the same way to be able to get the shape the profile right what we're talking about is the the uh flat sides right here um and yeah you can show yeah this is a piece of piece of raw stock from the stuff that i build all the time okay yeah so this is the this is how they start out in 
Darth's Darth Ellis's yeah, shop. That's, that's raw form, just a raw piece of uh, uh, extruded uh, oval pipe. And yep. from here, I, I make the different fittings for it, the connectors. Most of the chassis systems I use these days are all 3D printed stuff because that's gotten so popular and available. Yeah. And it's pretty amazing what can be done with 3D printing, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, we should go through some of that too. Um, I know, let me see if I can't get a good... Okay. Oh, you can you can broadcast them. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'll share a screen here, and you can see what we're kind of talking about a little bit about his work. Um. Uh, okay. Now let me see. Here it is. Okay. So you should be seeing that right now. Um. Okay. So. I'll just kind of scroll here through here. If you want me to stop anywhere and uh, add some, this is a this looks familiar. Is this from an anime? It is. Ah, Afro Samurai. Ah, nice. Yeah, if I wanted to imitate just the loose wrap of Vito that he had on there, but also the arc of the saber, that one's curved, and then a real thick suba. It's like a four inch suba on that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I built one like that, and then there's. Yeah, you can see the curve on it right yeah, there. Yeah, let's go back here. Then I did another one too that was uh, the same size and shape, but it was it turned out being um, a Darth Vader type theme saber called a Vader Odachi. Oh right, yes, you've. That's I think that's somewhere in this group. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, that's a very nice one too. It looks a very. Yeah, it's a big curved per, curve. The guy wanted like a bone effect applied to it to make it look like it was just ancient, either scrimshaw or just like a. Yeah, it does look like ball. ivory. Yeah, that's really nice. More there. Great dragon etching on the side there. There's a nice close up of the wraps. <clears throat> yeah, that one actually, to tell you the truth, I'm not real impressed with that. That's mm. one. That was one of my hand wraps that I did. Oh, on it. okay. That was before I had uh, I had Cottontail Customs doing the work for me because really all the sabers I build now with katanas. The way I see it, each individual part of it is artwork in its own right. So I hire out all my Edo work to Cottontail Customs, Josh Marlin there, because he's he's a master at it. Mm -hmm. He has all the tools, he has the time, he has the experience because he rebuilds katana swords. So I sent them to him. Gotcha. Like that's a great example. He wrapped that one for me in blue 10 millimeter sword. Oh, yes, very nice. He used Hishigami, <clears throat> which are your little uh, uh, rice paper squares to be able to create a good tight diamond pattern which I can't imagine the amount of work that's put into be able to put tuck little diamonds of paper in there to make sure it's going to have a nice tight, uh, nice tight diamond when it's finished. Oh my God. I've tried to wrap <laughs> swords like this, even in the Chinese way. And I am <laughs> so bad at it. You know, I've got a BFA in art school and, and I still, it's still, oh, it's, you, need, you need jigs. You, there's a lot of yeah, stuff you need to be yeah, able to do it it's, correctly. And I just, I realized after wrapping a couple of my own, there's no way I could wrap <clears> like that. And not, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, that beautiful work. Uh, and then there's one of uh, Noah Drew's of Obi-Wan's Glass Hut. That's one of his uh, 14 millimeter crystals or what they call a holocron marble. Nice. And what it is, it's a, it's a custom glass marble that he, that he creates. He works with glass and fire. He's, you know, he, he's a glass blower. But he also puts in like a synthetic opal in the center that floats in the middle that actually picks up all the light from the LED drive in the crystal chamber. Nice. All now, right. Another match set. Those are more <clears throat> simple, simplified. Yes. Now they don't have the hand guards, but I do want to make people aware that there are Japanese swords that do not have these hand guards. Mm -hmm. um, shorter ones, tantos, that kind of thing. So this is. Still within there. Oh, yeah, nice close up of the wraps there. Yeah, and the Manuki. Those are actually. Uh, oh, wow, that's right. That looks like a Mandalorian skull. Yeah, it's a Mythosaur skull. Sweet. It's 14 karat gold plated 3D printed pieces. Wow. And then the other side of them, the photo's not in there, but the other side had uh, like the rebel symbol that was done in gold too for the opposite sides. Cool. Then that's just a group shot. Yeah. You know, and again, that's all Josh's uh, wrap work. That's nothing I touched there. Yeah. Now those are the slim codas, right? Yes. 
Right. And that's kind of like a an early katana saber that was in Force Awakens? Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. Not Force Unleashed. That's the movie. Yeah. I'm not a big video game. I don't have much time to play video no, games, is, so I don't uh, know about this it. This from General Ram Coda. That was <clears throat> originally his saber. There's been a lot of different versions of it. Mm-hmm. But all the ones I've seen, it's got a very, very Japanese look and effect to it when it's said and done. Yeah. You know, and he's got some type of an Edo wrap on his saber in the video game as well. Yeah. All right. So there's my saber, the light dao. Um, or the guang dao as I as I call it. I, I actually have that down here. Um, we'll scroll through here because I'll I'll give you a better look at it in just a second. Um, but there we go. That's an, another nice. Now you do take actual subas from samurai swords or J- Japanese swords and repurpose them for the sabers, correct? Best way to make it look authentic. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, and it's, it definitely comes through. I mean, that's a. Yeah, that one's based on, um, that's loosely based on the show Hero, or mm. Heroes. Oh, right, yes. And then that one, that's just a Mako, Mako-themed katana because of the Suba. Yeah. And the uh, customer, he chose the, the purple wrap for it. And actually, that's, again, an example of my wrap. It ended up getting sent back to Josh, and he rewrapped it and did a lot nicer job. <laughs> it, it, that's, not, that's not easy. No, especially with Silk. He wrapped that one, too. Yeah, and that's uh that's, that's after a, very a video cool. game near Atana uh, Automa. Okay, and it's a video game that's got these hot looking stripper robots that kill alien robots, and <laughs> they're very athletic, and they again look like tall strippers that have swords. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what they're carrying. <laughs> that's huh? the the customer that the client that ordered that she wanted it for anime. Wow, you know, I mean for cosplay. Yeah, you know well quite nice and that one you can see i repurposed a lot of original sword parts to be able to make it yeah it looks like it you know it's that it's looks like an actual pommel. it's easier to find real parts you know or repurpose parts than it is to make them yeah the close-up there of the guard yeah and that's that's a switch and everything for it oh so that's really nice yeah that's all cast aluminum and there we got a ripper blade in there yep and I blended all the colors too, so it would look right. That's the Vader there, Odachi. Yes. Yeah. Now I've held this, and this is a really is a pretty awesome, awesome thing, especially when it's got a big blade in it, like a big 40-inch blade in it. Well, it's also with that one too. The funny thing about it, I kept going round and round. How am I going to do ray skin on this? So what we did was an etched pattern. We just etched it in. Yeah, and, yeah, that's right. I remember that. It, and then aged it a little bit to look like red ray skin. But uh, Josh wrapped that one, and he, he ended up using 26 foot of twenty of 10 millimeter black leather Edo on that. It's 26 feet on that thing. Wow. Lots of leather. It was almost double what a normal katana is. And it, and it had a sheath. Yes. Um, which you see in Visions. You yes. see them taking that out, which I think they should incorporate that into the larger... Uh, the larger Star Wars universe, too, because I'm sorry, that was too cool to see the the lightsaber blade even more so than it scrolling up out of the thing but to see it being revealed out of a scabbard that was cool for me anyway so there's more of that oh yeah there's there's like 60 photos in that whole thing i took a lot of pictures that's another good example of a wrap yep so i'll just kind of scroll here through a few more of these and you can see there, there's looks like a Canaan. Yep, that's a Canaan, which is really, it's. I, I went off the design features that you see on that saber from the show Rebels. Mm-hmm. I just did it with, again, with oval pipe instead of going round. I want to look different. That was a good family photo right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, um, if you, we've, we have in the past few years, I mean, we didn't, my last couple of years, it didn't happen, but we've gone down to Maker Fair and have had a booth there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and all of these sabers are a big hit, of course. That one was done with variegated Edo. Mm. It was a dragon theme for the Manuki and the uh, Suba, and done up in an antique bronze for the coloring. Oh, wow. That Suba is pretty, pretty amazing. And the way that it fits in with everything, with the Edo, with the, the blade. And that one, that one was themed... 
it's uh, some kind of odd anime that, that I forget what it was called, but that's that's an anime theme. Yeah, that's yeah. that Suba is a it's a traditional style. I've Chrysanthemum. seen that. Yeah, yeah. It's a chrysanthemum flower. And I can't remember who it belonged to. Was it the um, Tokugawa? I'm not sure, but I know that Carl Chen's company or Paul Chen. Paul Chen. Yeah. Paul Chen. They make an, a real nice iron one. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's really cool. At the end of it too. Yeah, that was all. That was showing off the yeah. the paint skill of my wife. That's uh, that was all done with um, Saracota heat baked ceramic paint that we've been more and more using yeah. in our projects. Yeah. Same with that. That's Saracota too. We use it because it's a lot tougher than powder coat. It's then you can even paint threads and hardware with it, and it still looks good. You know, you're not going to uh, really scratch it up that bad. It takes a lot, of, a lot of effort. Yeah, but you know, we seen a, a neat effect earlier. <laughs> oh yes, yes. So yes, well, let's let's we 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 we're gonna we're gonna ignite one of these uh, uh, katana sabers here. And fun we'll with green screen. Yes, watch fun, watch yeah. me turn into a force ghost. Uh oh! Oh, I gotta be able to turn it on. Oh, it's gotta be green too. Oh no! It's blue. Right, let's try this again. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And just <laughs> like that, I become a force ghost. Yep. This is such a neat effect. Absolutely. So <laughs> here. <laughs> All right. Let me turn this off. Yeah, we can't actually see the saber with the Um, there you go. Okay, so that's this is a good one to kind of show too. So this is now I have I have one of these that you that, that is still in the shop. Um, that you guys have seen when you see me with the green two-handed saber with the you know kind of looks like this and all that that's a darth alice katana saber um we're putting some new hardware on it and all of that kind of thing right now but it's very similar to this it's about this length um leather wrap same kind of, same kind of deal um but yeah so this is this is kind of like the base the base model um, I, of course, fell in love with these because of what we do, right? It feels like a real sword because we've talked about this ad nauseum. Real sword handles are not round. Um, and if we look at an actual katana, there, you can see the similarity in the shape, right? So when you're using Todd's sabers they they really feel like a real sword right um the balance all of that kind of thing definitely all going into it. and of course just the feeling of the handle um well this one's an old one too i mean i built this one i think seven six seven years ago i put this one together i mean it still runs a very old igniter system and after all this time it still boots up fires up and it actually it belongs to one of my clients that just he he's had it in my possession for a long time on consignment and um it's actually looking kind of looking for a home <laughs> yeah so it's for sale so yeah anybody out there interested give us a give us an email um so here's here is the light dial that um he made for me um it is a one-handed saber um I, this is my go-to saber usually. Obviously, when we're doing the, when I'm teaching classes, doing other stuff, I'm using the persuader as the kind of, you know, workhorse or whatever. But honestly, most of the time when I'm practicing by myself, when I'm fighting or something like that, it's this guy right here. Um, again, it's, it's not a two-handed saber, it's a one-handed saber. So I, I use it in that way. Um, most sabers are two-handed sabers, so that doesn't really bother me that much. But I think it'd probably be interesting, people would be interested to see. This is the first saber I got from Todd. Um, this was a uh, Saber Forge Redeemer um, that, I, th that I bought a long time ago. I took it out of the box um, in an unboxing video, no less. That, I, I never actually posted that video. Um, but as I opened the box, the uh, control the control box just exploded on me. Um, 
And then I was kind of going through it. And then this piece broke off. I gave it to you and actually made it pretty combat worthy. Um, I still worry about this section here, but we've got the chassis inside. Yeah, that's all solid Delrin. It's, it's a good solid piece in there. Yeah. So, you know, this type of construction, I mean, even the stuff that he does with, with cannon hilts. Um, and you see, I've, I've reduced, I asked him to reduce the size of the control box. So it's, it, so it's a little bit better to, to, to hold on to, and it still gives the suggestion of it. Um, and obviously, uh, looks great, right? So there you go. Um, that's just an interesting history be between us. I, I, God, I, mean, that must I can't been... remember when I did that. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, it was, I, I would have to look because it was at uh, the Comic-Con that we were that we were at when we were at Motor City Comic Con, we had that booth with Aaron. Yeah, that was probably like 2004, 2005, I think. Was it that one? No, I don't think. Yeah, it was. It was. it was. it was. No, it couldn't be because I we got together in 2012. So it must have been like 2000, 2012, 2013, yeah, yeah, you're something right. like that. You're right. I'm going to the way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> happens when you get into your 50s, man. Like, oh, that was mm. only 10 years ago. No it doubt. Five years ago. Oh, no, it was 20. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, the the the, the things. Uh, the 80s to kids now are like the 40s were to us. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a sobering thought. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so there, so, so there we go. Um, these have actually been in the community out there for, for quite some time. So the fact that them showing up in uh, Visions is kind of a boon because this is one of those times when it, when it back, the influence backtracks, right? And yeah. the fans influence the, the, uh, the material. Um, now, obviously, <clears throat> they didn't say, oh, look, they're building katana sabers. Let's make samurai Star Wars movies because this is, the Jedi have always been samurai. Right. That's just... Well, yeah, you go back to um, what is it? The um, Hidden Castle with uh, Hidden Mithi. Fortress. Yep. Hidden Fortress. That's it. Yep. But yeah, Kurosawa, that was a lot of his stuff is where Lucas got his ideas in the first place. I mean, you look at the flowing robes and the obis that the Jedi wear, that's all in influenced directly from Japanese clothing. You get into Wikipedia, they get deeper into the origins of the Jedi. And originally they were wielding um, swords that look like samurai swords that was that were imbued with the force or force imbued blades. So that's where I really took that idea from was Wikipedia seeing that and just developing on that. So yeah. it just only makes sense. Plus they had those, uh, you did that one proto saber once. Yes. That was very, uh, very famous out there. Um, and that was what, it, it was like a little a bell pack. It was a bell pack with a cord driving. But what, what you made it out of like a fire extinguisher oh, a or something? 1920s fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, it was tiny. It was, yeah, it was like the old pump style ones. And what I did was I cut and sectioned it. I added some brass plate pieces to it and just did a lot of metal work to get it where it had blinkies in it. It had a little Luma glass eye that would look like lightning shooting across the front. Lots of room for a big battery and then a big 40 millimeter speaker inside of it. So it was loud. Yeah, and that was the old system too. Back when we used to use, you know, two big three point seven uh, uh, volt batteries instead of single ones. Everything these days, you know, a lot of guys building sabers, they've kind of gotten to the point where just getting in the hobby after two or three years, well, there's all these resources. There's a million three D printed printed parts on Shapeways. There's dozens of saber making people that will supply you empty hilts. Well, back in the day, we had to make all that stuff. Yeah, We had to produce it. We just couldn't just go, oh, I'm going to order this off a website. No, I had to sit down mm -hmm. with bare aluminum and go, how am I going to make this and make it where it looks good? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were three three basic sites, right? There was Saber Forge, Ultra Sabers, Vader's Vault. Essentially, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and um, 
if you you know most people went for ultra sabers because they could they they were they were cheap and they're fast right i did the same thing i got a ton of ultra sabers i still have them mm -hmm. um you know they're fine whatever the company leaves something to be desired if it's a niche. <laughs> if it's a niche i mean a lot of people getting into the hobby they don't want to spend more than 150 exactly. on a light up sword you know some right you want, hand over to your kid let them beat it up against a tree take mm -hmm. it out for costuming photos yeah it's 150 bucks you can get something that works all day for that yeah and plus you go to galaxy's edge now you have the galaxy's edge legacy sabers yeah for 150 i mean i my darth maul was 149.99 for one so 150 bucks you know you get a blade 50 that's 200 and mine wasn't even the cheapest it was still probably better than the old master replica too i would think. oh my god yes i have it i should have brought it down but i have it upstairs and it's yeah it's 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 metal construction it's mm -hmm. good it's screen accurate right well again that's getting the conversation we were talking about i was just on a i was with a solid savers the other day doing an interview and we were talking you know for tra about canon versus non-canon mm -hmm. and i mean a lot of people are obsessed they they collect canon sabers they want canon sabers they want five different versions of a leak loop v2 well it's still it's canon you know i mean there's only so much or so far you can go with it when you get more into expanded universe you're now getting into again visions we're seeing so many different things popping out of that including a parasol <laughs> yes a lightsaber parasol with eight blades <laughs> now so there have been a lot of crazy weird fan art and stuff like that with lightsaber stuff right mm -hmm. like if, if people think back remember the uh light scythe it was it was just a picture yeah right yeah and it was just this guy holding this gigantic lightsaber with this huge beam on it and um light lightsaber nunchucks that was another not like yep and the senji going so three 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 section staff mm -hmm. nunchucks three section staff sort of strains my brain because there's so much contact with the body that you need to make those weapons work um be cutting your arms off i, I you know i can't i can't see i can't see how you do that without no no it's, it's a no it's, it's but yeah crazy. that parasol if okay so if you have not seen visions spoiler alert but mm, if you're yeah, tuning into this you probably have seen it yeah the first episode they first got, episode yeah they whip out a parasol saber so a a sun umbrella opens up and on each of the spikes is a lightsaber that then can spin and all that now the cool thing about it was is they didn't use it like they did the spinning sabers in rebels yeah they didn't use it like the helicopter right she couldn't helicopter right she did what what, what she used it for is blaster deflection she went yeah. boom and just created this huge shield in front of her so i was like oh that's that's actually a pretty good use of of that particular weapon and it had a very long stick therefore you know you got eight spinning sabers you can keep people at a distance don't anyone ask me to build one because i'm not going yeah to yeah no, no. <laughs> if, if you want one of those somebody will i guarantee but some, somebody me. will but basically what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get eight separate sabers yeah and you need to put them on that that thing because that's the thing it, even in the cartoon she takes one of those or two of those sabers right off that parasol and are using them like regular sabers. So well, they looked, have to be. I looked at it and I'm like, well, from a practical standpoint, I could make it. Then I went, but why would I want to? Yeah. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> yeah. Unless you're being paid like movie money. You know, like, let's do yeah, We want you yeah, to make this George, prop. George Lucas prop money. Well, right. Yeah. Sure. I'll yeah, do it. Sure. I'll do it. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> and that, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we could make we could make almost anything now you know especially if we're using it in in film and tv because we can make the illusion of anything yeah, yeah right now about it. um but yeah so the parasol saber that was a <laughs> that was a that was a pretty good good reveal uh, one thing though and i don't know if we want to talk about the actual show 
they did do the gag of, oh, we think they're Jedi. Nope, now they're Sith. A yeah. little too many times and where it became kind of old hat. But maybe that's just the what what Japanese audiences latch on to. Well, it's, it's another direction that they went in. I mean, it's always been thought that the crystal that you get is really the mineral itself is what's creating whatever color blade. Uh-huh. You know, it's a fur can. It's a, um, you know, there's a lot of different names for different uh, different crystals. Mm-hmm. And then the Sith were always, it was always said that they bled the crystals, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to get that red to create the red blade. Well, now we're seeing on visions where whatever your alignment is internally, it, the saber is going to light up based upon what you really are. So if you're leaning towards a Sith, hey, what do you know? My lightsaber's red now. Well, oh, I'm a good guy now. I'm feeling better. Oh, it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I don't know. I don't know if that was. I don't know if that was what they were getting going going toward in visions. But it does bring you know the whole thing of your of of it changing the color of it um, is an interesting thing that they added, right? That 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 red crystals are bled or 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 something like that. Because if you were a Sith. What advantage does that give you? Wouldn't it be better to have just like a regular lightsaber blade and nobody knows that you're a Sith and then you can come up and just and then they don't see you coming? So it's, it's a, dramatic. It's right. And it's, it's, it shows, you know, I yeah. mean, it's, and it's a good, it's it, narratively, it's a good little thing, right? Oh, we think he's good. He lights his lightsaber. It's red. Oh, he's bad. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was an interesting take on that. Was, exactly. A, I, a different it, angle from, right. from an artist that, you know, was expressing himself. Well, and also, really, to tell you the truth, out of all the cartoons, I mean, I liked a couple of them. I haven't watched the whole series yet, I'll admit. I mean, I can't binge on something like yeah. that. But the ones I've watched, the first one was excellent. I loved mm-hmm. all of the contrast with the black and white, that style of cartooning, you know, anime work. I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was great. Then the other ones, they got more into the, the kids, you know, more stuff that's like Kim of the, most yeah. guys won't even get the reference, but Kim of the White Lion. Well, it's, well, it's the, um, it, it, it's a Japanese concept called, I think it's called um, kawaii, which is cuteness. Mm-hmm. And it is a huge thing yes. in Japanese culture. Um, I remember seeing a, a whole art exhibit on this mm-hmm. and they had some crazy things in there oh my god the mascots I yeah the whole mascot crazy oh my god there, yes you know? uh what's his name uh the one the drummer oh that's it uh, something star guy in a mascot suit plays like heavy metal drums <laughs> unbelievable look it up on on, on 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 youtube anyway uh yes it will get into there some of the i've watched them all and they go, some of them are far more, are, are going to be harder to access for people who don't watch anime, mm. right? But I'm positive that every single one of these episodes has a fan. Oh, absolutely. Somebody out there absolutely. watched it and said, yes, this is exactly what I want, right? Even the second one, which is, it's silly, you know, it's kind of a little funny, a little lighthearted. It's got Jabba the Hutt in it and mm. they're, they're the more cutesy well, like, cutesy yeah, characters the bobblehead type characters yeah they they're, yeah, yeah they kind of look like like five-year-old proportions it's right like they're like the, they're kind of like a cartoon made on those uh the pops yeah you know yeah exactly yes yeah. which is again that cutesy thing you're talking about. right exactly but tomorrow morrison well yeah i was looking voices past Boba i was looking past, i'm like well it's his voice coming yeah out. they used the, yep he's <laughs> Tamora Morrison is leaning it. He loves playing Boba Fett. Yeah. He loves it. Um, so he's going to do every opportunity. Boba Fett's in this cutesy little cartoon. I want to do the voice. Well, that's this year, isn't it? Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett isn't that coming out? Boba, sure? Book of Boba Fett is coming out. That is that is very true. Um, so, yes. Um, let's, uh, what else you got? Let's see. Let's see what's see what's uh, well s- some of the stuff that you're working on now. Fortunately, my client said that he didn't want these at his home in California until like the third of next month. So uh-huh. this here is a freshly Ooh. set of Ahsoka sabers. 
or Mandalore or Ahsoka inspired saber, I should say. Right, because it's not. And this one, there was a special request. The, the client wanted uh, Japanese kanji symbols etched into the pattern itself. So they're what's called a positive etch and that they're raised. Um, my wife, she did all the paint work, of course. Uh, Mrs. Alice, she does all the Cerakote work. Focus. <laughs> it won't focus on my and, uh, Those are running new Profi 2.2s with 5.9 operating system. Big difference. So I, I extended the mitters on them to look more like the stunt sabers you see in the Mandalorian. And I went for the old color scheme that you see really that Disney put out for Rebels and that you have a good contrast between the main saber and the Shoto. There's all kinds of stuff that they had to do transferring the stuff from animation to live action. So here's the... The Shoto and the all that kind of thing. My my biggest gripe with with the Mandalorian is that she's holding him like this a lot of times, and that <laughs> really gets under my skin yeah, um, because it's all reverse grip. Everything she's supposed to be doing is reverse grip with fighting with them. Well, when she's holding them in regular grip, she's holding them like this, uh, with this down. Um, yeah, and yeah, whatever. <laughs> it does not diminish my enjoyment of the show at all so don't 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 be thinking that but these are crazy awesome i mean i've always loved these these especially the 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 soft curve that you've got in here and you added now a step here i see mm -hmm. yeah it's stepped and i did it differently than the other people that make these because mm -hmm. um a lot of guys just have where it's just engraved or it's been milled out to create a hand grip. Well, with this one, I cut sections out and made a small pipe, cut it in half and put it up on the inside uh. to create a true hand grip feel. And it was at the time when I came up with that, it was the way I thought of with my machining and what I've got to be able to create that look. Yeah. Because really well, the, the original set I built was just straight off of a, uh, straight off of um, Disney rebels, just, looking at different photographs, looking at different Disney artwork to make them. At yeah. that time, nobody had made those yet. And it was a good year and a half, two years before KR Sabres came out with their versions. Well, mm -hmm. by that time, I had already established the, the standard size for these with a 14-inch main hilt, secondary hilt being 9.5 to 10, which, for whatever reason, it seems to become the standard. And it looks and that looks I'm like not, the standard on the show. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but boy, I tell you, I looked at a lot of the still shots of Rosario uh -huh. and Austin stunt sabers, and they looked an awful lot like this set. Yeah, they do. Um, to the point where I think they might have found my uh, materials. <laughs> Which I don't if think you're so. Multi billion dollar prop department, you can do anything you want. Yeah, but I don't think they did because Probably. in in one of the making of, they showed the sabers taken apart on a on a workbench oh and they were taken apart in half so oh, they're clamshell so they clamshell yeah right on. which i mean that's a good way of doing this you know, really i think they did it simply for repair right because yeah. they're probably repairing them a whole lot and they just want something easy that they can access oh yeah well that's why and I, it's just got to look good enough on screen well that's right? why the guys that came after me they kind of did it the hard way and that they took a block a block of aluminum and then mill the whole saber out of that mm -hmm. i mean you get a lot of waste and yeah you get the shape and everything but then you have a thin little aluminum door that you put on there mm -hmm. and i guess if you really have to have a crystal chamber inside of them and a real fancy chassis system well that's great you know mm -hmm. if that's what you want these ones i built those where they're seamless there's no seam all the, all the way across no. i wanted to make them where they were strong where you could actually take and put a blade in them beat on them pretty hard and you can yeah and that's that's the thing i mean of all of the ahsoka sabers that i've ever ever handled um of that style um because i haven't high on most of the other one but of that style these are the only ones that you can fight with everything else you're you're, you're like these are really really beautiful but well the design <laughs> again they were going more towards accuracy that yes. you see in the cartoon. Correct. You know, when you look at, at Rebels, the emitter balls are actually cupped in in such a way where there's no blade pocket. Well, yeah. To recreate that, both the other two companies that were made them that were making them after I came up with them, um, they did a real, real shallow little ball, and it was made out of aluminum with legs on the bottom that just screwed in from the back side of the hilt. 
The problem with that is that's a major load bearing point and one good hard swing would snap that piece off. Yeah. I have a feeling that from a warranty standpoint, there's been a lot of those little ball emitters replaced just because that is such a weak point in the designs that I've seen personally. Because I've, I've had two or three of my competitors looked at them, you know, all the way around and seen them apart and everything. In fact, some people have sent stuff to my powder coater because I mentioned his name on here and they're mm -hmm. like, well, oh, I want you to do the same thing you did for Darth Alice. Mm -hmm. well, next thing you know, I'm at his house looking at a pair of my competitor's empty sabers that he's about to paint. He mm -hmm. goes, quit, quit mentioning my name. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather paint Harley's. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Yes. So um, the Katana Saber, I mean, those are related to the Katana Saber because um, even though they don't have a guard, even when they came out in, in Rebels, mm -hmm. the shape, the the, 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 the the kind of little diamonds in there. The yeah, so everything. Suggestion. Very, very, yes, very heavily suggested. In fact, they're very similar to the, even the, the diamonds that you see on here that were put on just to give tactile mm -hmm. um, whatever <laughs> tactile sensation yeah it's give just you know, grip. Grip, grip enhancement yeah you know that was the point yeah but i i believe that's what they were aiming for too because when you look at the character ahsoka you know with the big leku and everything and then mm -hmm. you look at her outfits I mean, in the live action show, especially they were they were repeating a lot of scenes from Pure Sorrow, especially that that showdown scene at the end. You know, the yeah, yeah, they showdown. had a very they 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 definitely took the Kurosawa um, aesthetic. Yeah, and then when you look at again her outfit and everything, the mm -hmm. way they say it, it, she looks like female samurai. Well, also she's wearing toppy. Yes. So yes, you know if that's the yeah, split, split toe shoes, shoes. So yeah. um, that even more there but you, as far as that that particular episode goes too the the real big thing that was taken from japanese cinema and kurosawa and everything like that was not the sabers not the top not any of that not even the showdown it was the it was the silence yeah. right where they have so many things of people just kind of looking you know, look it out, and then they'll say like one line. The line between before Dinjarin goes out to 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 find Ahsoka to hunt her, right? Um, and Michael Bean's character, that little exchange mm -hmm. was so terse and awkward. It was just like, oh yeah, see, that's that's the aesthetic, and that is what. I think is being reached for with the katana saber, like with the people, why people like it, right? Mm -hmm. There's that ergonomic design. There's the, the, the elegance of, of that. And as far as hilt based weapons go, samurai sword with the wrap and all that stuff, very recognizable. Yes. You know, absolutely. You can, well, the, the funny thing about it though, is, I've got two different kinds of customers really when it comes to that type of build. Mm -hmm. I have the guy that wants to, just like you, dueling club, he wants to be able to fight with it. He wants something durable that's going to hold up to a lot of abuse. So I've got a hardware package just for that to make him strong. Well, then I have the other guy that just wants it for a shelf queen. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he might put a blade in it and take some pictures, but for the most part, it's going to set up on a shelf with a full reveal. So you can see a crystal chamber. You can see the beautiful Japanese, uh, Suka Ito work done on it and the paintwork, it really becomes more of uh, an art piece that, that you display. Yeah. Once you get to a certain level of detail built. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even my Obi Wan is of such a, you know, of, of such a look and stuff like that. This is also a shelf queen. Yeah, right? They did a good job. Of, I mean, that first Redeemer, they did a good job of making that look correct. You oh, know, as far as the silhouette, yeah, yeah, definitely. They did it. They did a good job. I mean, yeah, when you look at that compared to a Romans or some of the other ones, there's sure. obvious differences, right? So. But again, for something that you could stick a blade in, swing around, and it would light it up, and it looked like an Obi Wan. Hey, that's mm -hmm. a great saber. And something you can hang on your belt, take it to yep. a con. Yep. And it looks just as good because when you get into the replicas like a Roman, that's made with real steel or uh, mm -hmm. or cast iron for the grip. 
uh, the back section back here, this little booster section there is made out of steel. So when you get one of these that's a real mm -hmm. replica, that thing weighs a good three or four pounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> they don't hang on your belt real well. <laughs> no, no. They will pull your pants right down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. But, I mean, and then if you, if we really think about it, like I was saying, George Lucas took a lot from Kurosawa. Mm -hmm. The first Star Wars movie is essentially Hidden Fortress. Right. If you haven't seen Hidden Fortress, go see Hidden Fortress and you will see this this little ragtag team of people, a print, a deposed princess, a scoundrel. Right. And two slaves. The Luke thing is a different thing, but there's two slaves that escape. And there's your R2D2 and C3PO. And if you kind of know that going in, it'll be. It'll be kind of fun. And and for sources, too. I mean, I'm not sure what people have for viewing, you know, for their cable companies. But I found there's a free app for on streaming TV called Tubi. T-U-B-I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My God, they have some of the most obscure old really? Japanese samurai flicks from the 1940s and 50s. I mean, pretty much everything that Toshiro Mifuni's in, you can find it on Tubi. Wow. You know, and then anime, too. You get into a lot of odd, odd anime, even going back, or even the old um, kaiju movies, the old Godzilla mm -hmm. and Gamma and everything. They've got a lot of them. Oh, that's nice. And then if you get into, of course, you know, the old Hammer Schlemmerker films or the old Hammer films. Yeah, yeah. Yep, they have all those, too. Yeah. So, yeah, Tubi is... It's the I'm going to check that out. I hope you have access to internet TV. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. But... Um... Because I would like to see more. So, so there's there's a lot of Chinese cinema, mm -hmm. Hong Kong cinema, that hasn't filtered over here. We've got like Crouching Tiger, Iron Monkey was put on over here. But there's, I mean, there are so many. Again, get into two, get so into two. many. Yeah, yeah, so get many into, movies. There's a lot there. of those on there. Yeah. So yeah, that whole genre. They have one section that's just all martial arts. Yeah. <laughs> there you go so very true um so yeah um hidden fortress kurosawa that kind of thing so this kind of aesthetic has always been part of the thing even the mandalorian takes so much not just that episode but takes so much from kurosawa and samurai films mm -hmm. right interesting interestingly enough kurosawa took a lot of his things from westerns Mm -hmm. right and that's why you see you know very many similarities and then of course later on the italians took the things from kurosawa and applied them back to westerns yeah yeah the old eastwood flicks yeah spaghetti westerns the spaghetti westerns the westerns mm -hmm. that were shot in italy so they probably had better food on the set <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so this is, I mean, obviously, th these things, and also, though, if we move away even just from katanas, because you do other historically based. Yeah, I do. Sales. I do an odd, you know, sword based saber on occasion, right. you know. But the, see, that's the thing that's going to continue to become more popular because if you've seen any of the High Republic stuff, mm -hmm. They all have cross guards, and it's, they're starting to get more kind of swordish looking hilts that are based on other cultures other than Japanese, mm -hmm. right? The Japanese is very easy with the lightsaber because the suba is iconic, and it's it fits well, right? Cross guard. Like I remember, I remember, remember when the cross guard came out in Force Awakens. Yeah, it, it's just like. Everybody's like, hmm. Oh, it got bashed on heavily. Yeah. yeah. But well, you think about it though. I mean, who would ever thought? What kind of imagination did a guy have to go dig through a box of props and go, hey, look at this, a camera flash. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what? We can have this thing turn into a laser sword. We just got to put some, you know, like windshield wiper. I, but I think and... more, more, moreover, it was a guy who came to another guy and said, I need a lightsaber. What's a lightsaber? It's like a it's like a laser sword. Yeah. And he goes, Okay, and he goes into his room full of junk. I was like, hmm, that looks kind of good, and that looks kind of good. And you stick it together so you can get 
Yeah, that one was probably one of the best examples of just found parts. Oh, yeah. So the whole evolution from this to this, not necessarily unheard of, or, I mean, this is sort of looking at this, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to recreate a sword that yeah. looks like a... A sci-fi weapon. And again, who would ever thought of using some Rolls-Royce jet engine parts? Right. A rifle grenade from World War One. Yeah, rifle grenade here. Um, this the, is the one Rolls-Royce. This uh, is a Aaron. sink. This is a like a faucet. Uh, Sterling sink handle. Yep, faucet Turner thing. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um, camera flash. World War Two um, Browning machine gun booster. Okay. This was, of course, the same Graflex. Yeah, Graflex, uh, Graflex uh, clamp. Right. And then what was this? That was the uh, off the rifle grenade. That was the, the wind vane. Okay. That was still the rifle grenade. Yes. Okay. How far did the rifle grenade go up? It still had two prongs that came up like this. So all of th this whole neck piece was. Yeah. This end, it had like these like forks, you know, like a, uh -huh. like a fork come up and that was shoved down into the barrel. Then they had fired, I believe it would ignite a charge back here, which would fire it off. Okay. What was... And that's a DeWant Rolls-Royce um, jet engine air intake, I think. Okay. Or air mixer for an intake. Very possibly off of the head of IG-88, because the IG-88 thing is a Rolls-Royce jet engine. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's this might be like one of those pieces... Yeah, that comes a, out of what is the one they use for a lamp head. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, the other thing that that is is the cantina serving. They have them hanging in the cantina. Yeah, they're lamps. <laughs> no, I think they're serving. Oh, okay. they're, they're, I think they're supposed to be serving drinks oh, out okay. of them. Okay. So I think so. Spencer's. Yeah. yeah I like I think I lamps. think some dude goes up to them. And I know, like, if you go to uh, uh, what's uh, the Scum and Vill Villainy Cantina in LA. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that they do have a couple of those that are either you could eat. They're either dispensing drinks from or they're near the dis drinks dispensers. Those things are so like popular it. now, guys, are 3D printing. them. Oh, I'm sure. You yeah. Know, well, actually, with 3D printing, I've you seen, can get almost any of this. Stuff. Oh, I've seen full IG-88s that look really good 3D printed out. It's like, man, I got, I got to break down and get a 3D printer. <laughs> yeah. My life. Oh, my God. I would love to have an IG-88. Yeah, <laughs> just, just put that put that out in front of your you just house. Gotta, you just got to go out and buy the files now and get a 3D printer and make one. Yep, <laughs> that's what it's come down to. You know, you want something like that? Shit, just make it. It is true. All right, let's see what we got here. We got a couple of people there. Uh, we've got a. Do you have any work that has been featured in fan films? Any any of your any of your. Uh, I think the blood crystal. Oh yeah, yeah, that one that John Solomon did. Oh yeah, oh. I, I believe, I believe, yeah, one of my sabers showed up in that. Um, I've got a cosplayer group, a group of cosplayers down in Georgia called Sublime Lightworks, and I know they're working on um, a major, like, ultimate costume Ahsoka cosplay, and they've got a set of my sabers, set of Ahsoka sabers. But to answer your question, no, I, I wish I could say I had stuff in feature films, but I do not. Oh, well. Soon. Uh, let's see here. Um, the balance pipe, I think it's a balance pipe of a Rolls-Royce Dewart engine. That's it. The balance pipe from, yeah, the the Dewar engine from Rolls Royce. See, I knew somebody out there would know, have that answer right at the top of their head. Right. <clears throat> okay. All right. That's all the questions I see there for right now. Um, do we have? Well, what I was going to say though is that we're going to probably see more of this melding of real swords and sabers. Mm -hmm. I would, I would imagine. Um, just because, um, I don't know, there's just well, so I, much I you know, can do with this. I know right? just in the last, when did that come out? Friday? That short? No, Thursday. Uh, Wednesday. 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 It came out Wednesday. I've already had, I think, 14 requests, people asking about katana builds already mm -hmm. just email getting flooded. 
I'm sure because um, especially in some of the later episodes that you probably haven't watched yet, they get some glam shots of the sabers mm-hmm. and i'm sure there's going to be people who are wanting these specific oh, that, things that first the the what was it was it the first one where yeah they were building the lightsabers for they had a smith that was making just generic lightsabers no that was what the third one I yeah that was the third one i think it was yeah i, I made yeah. sure to get a good screenshot of that table yeah. because it's like hey you know what those are all very easily doable shapes uh-huh. that may not end up being canon but at least they do have an origin yeah you could say this is from you know this is based on visions or inspired by visions exactly you know right so it just it gives us all more ideas because i've been in this this long i've seen thousands of different designs go through different people's hands that's why again i gripe about canon versus expanded universe Mm -hmm. in that anybody that smith sabers it's real easy just to go well here i'm going to make it look just like that one that i saw before what really takes talent for somebody that does this for a living and building sabers is coming up with a signature that is theirs. Mm-hmm. No one else has one like it or created one like it. That yeah. way you can be the guy later on that other people copy. <laughs> right. Well, that's the, that's, that's the goal. It never feels good, but there's but, no such thing. There's yes. no, they're really, yeah. when it's all said and done, we've gotten to this before, but, Disney ultimately owns all of the copyrights and patents. If it says mm-hmm. laser sword or lightsaber on it, they're just being generous enough to let us carry on doing what we do day in day out. That's how I kind of look at it. Absolutely, and yeah, no, and they they are they are aware of us. Mm-hmm. Um, I I knew somebody who worked in Lucasfilm licensing, and she was aware of all of us, mm-hmm. and you know, and they're like, we're perfectly cool with it, you know, until you start. Je- jeopardizing things with legal. Oh, well, when action. you do things like you know, use like a character's image to sell your product. If you know you're to take, I don't know, like Ventress and put her up and say, "Look, I'm selling a Ventress." Well, well right. So that's the thing. Have a problem with that, right? So that's the thing. Is like a lot of people would name their savers like Ventress. Like if you said it, they were they were. If you if, if you named it the Ahsoka, you'd probably get a call from them saying, "Change the name, please." inspired by as long as you say inspired by or whatever you're fine Mm -hmm. you know um they just don't want you they just don't want people to confuse officially licensed product with stuff that they don't have any control well again it's it's such a fine line and i i'm convinced it comes down to a popularity contest among (laughs) sabersmiths and who builds what and who sells the most of what really i mean there's a couple designs out there that are just a bunch of standard mhs parts that are slapped together sure but then you've got people think that's their proprietary design. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not. It's MHS parts slapped together. Mm-hmm. That all belongs to the custom saber shop. Right. And they design it where you can customize their parts and pieces and come up with a design. Well, if I take four or five pieces from an MHS, put them all together, paint it a certain way, add decorations to it, at the end of the day, it's still an MHS saber. And I could never go after someone else for copyright infringement true because i took some mhs parts together and slapped them together and right look, oh it looks kind of like yours right it's it's, it's, it's basically it's like it's, it's basically like um sending a cease and desist to somebody playing legos yeah you know you built the same thing with legos that i did well it's oh. the same with that word building building versus assembling when you take a bunch of parts someone else made electronics someone else made you put them all together you assembled it Right. So here's a good point. Well, wait, wait, wait. Going along those lines, it's like a car. Yeah, yeah. I could I could take a 64 Mustang, rip it all the way down, strip it down to bare metal, rebuild the engine, everything, and bring it from the top bottom up. Mm-hmm. I didn't build that car. I restored it. Right. Ford built that car. Ford is the one that poured the steel for that engine. Ford is the one that, that had the stamping plant make those pieces for the doors. Ford is the one that had their glass plant make the glass for the car. I didn't make anything on that vehicle. Mm-hmm. I just restored it and put it together. Right. Well, this is a good point because I make a distinction between kind of three levels of saber maker out there. You've got installers, mm-hmm. right? You, you have an empty. Could you install this for me? Yep. They're, they do electronics. They do this stuff. They usually work with other other people in the, in, you know, in the community and stuff like that and, and all that kind of thing. Then you have what I'd call manufacturers, people who design the hilts and they, 
you know, put them out, usually mass produce it, like key savers, that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, ultra savers. Um, and th those would be like saber manufacturers. And then you have uh, people like you, who I would consider saber smiths, meaning you do each part. Because, you know, a lot of times the install is not done by the people mm -hmm. who are making the hilt like hence installers right mm -hmm. hence that's why the, the job exists um so so todd's a smith right you he does everything from scratch like there is nothing here and then now there is something um whereas there are levels to this thing obviously <laughs> that's a bigger service smithing it takes longer too i mean a lot of times I'll spend more time working on design in my head because I'm one of these people, I don't write anything down. I just, I imagine it and keep working on it, working on it until I come up with something I feel is going to be a design. And then I just sit back on the lathe in the mill and make it. Mm -hmm. And if it turns out right, great. If not, I end up scrapping that piece and starting right. over again with the same process. Mm -hmm. So it, it is time consuming. I mean, you know, if you actually paid me by the hour, I probably make half a minimum wage. <laughs> right yeah no each that's one, true each one of these things i build yeah. i'm building it to my standard as if i were mm. building it for my collection and for myself right. or for a relative right i'm not going to give you something that at the end of the day you're going to have troubles with it mm -hmm. and knock on wood i rarely see anything come back for repair yeah. for service work because again it's got to be right going before it leaves the door yep and that's the other thing too before we close the show for today um price out there is going to reflect all of this stuff you know when you get a lower price there are reasons for that either they've found some sort of manufacturing process where they can mass produce something um so like places like key savers um they manufacture a bunch of stuff and you know for for this use um you're making one-offs, mm -hmm. right? It would be like expecting you going to get a custom violin and expecting it to be the same price as a violin you get at Music Go Around. Uh -huh. You know, it's like these are enti two entirely different animals, right? Um, take anything like that, furniture. Mm -hmm. Well, you I, know, I sold, there, there's there's manufactured yeah. and then there's, you know. Well, I sold construction for a lot of years. I sold cars at one point. I've sold a lot of stuff. And there's an old saying that it holds true with pretty much anything that you purchase. And that is the bitterness of, mm. a, of a low quality product. The, the bitter taste of low quality lasts far longer than the sweetness of a good deal. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And I, I've got a lot of tattoos. That's one of the things that we'd say to tattoo people. It's like, look, you're going to spend way more money on way less in your life, mm -hmm. right? Don't skimp on it. Be careful. Go, go, go into it with both eyes open. Don't get something flimping and do not bargain hunt. Um, Anybody that's ever replaced a floor in their house knows all about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> only a rich man can afford a cheap floor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All right. Well, there we are uh, at the end of the hour here. Um, so thank you, Todd, for, for joining us. Um, well, hopefully. Thank you again for inviting me. Hey, we always love having you on. It was good to focus on this, though, because um, this is your stuff has been a, a big part of what we do here for a long time anyway. Um, and uh, definitely for our money, uh, the, the, the granddaddy of them all, um, as far as the Sabre people working out there right now, in our opinion. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you, Todd. Thank you, everybody out there for joining us today. Thanks. Um, thanks, everybody, for our... Uh, being in on the comments, we will see you uh, next time. So patience, practice, perseverance. Happy Saber. May the peace be, force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. May, may, the, be, may the peace be with you. Yeah, it's all, we're, we're, we're mixing.